cards on the table, rarely go to the theater, very rarely went, even before COVID. So I'm going to be more easily impressed with the big screen, no distractions by multitasking. I also unironically enjoy trashy movies, which make, make me more forgiving of flaws which would be jarring for other people. And in my opinion, you know, the Resident Evil movies are inspired by stuff like The Thing and Aliens, but uh, they're more like the Italian zombie movies, you know, like uh, Zombie, Nightmare City, Gates of Hell, that sort of thing. Now, one of the big two deviations from the source material is combining the accident at the lab with you know that zombie you know, break and the general zombie incursion in Resident Evil, I mean, Raccoon City proper, you know, the second Resident Evil game. Right, some might say they're trying to condense too much into one movie, but I still like the idea of the town itself gradually dying due to umbrella's carelessness, and it's the accident at the lab, that's, that's the fatal moment, that's the catalyst for everything. Now the other big change is the emphasis on the Redfields, uh, you know, Chris and Claire. Now I never finished Code Veronica, and I could be dead wrong, but I felt like the games never made the most out of that uh, brother-sister dynamic. I mean, now in the movie there might be a plot hole, plot discrepancies, because you know, some of the math I was a little confused on, but putting the uh, sibling bond more prominently, that, I, I enjoyed that. Now, even though that is front and center, the casting, it's more of an ensemble with different subplots and characters tweaked here and there. I I understand frustration with a core character like Sherry. She's more of a cameo. But with the uh, corrupt police chief, I think it helps the story flow better if he's just an expendable lackey and we omit that backstory. He's a serial rapist, among other things. I mean, Leon's characterization isn't flattering and people aren't going to like that because they love Leon. But from my own memory, he was a dipstick in Resident Evil 2. And that's pretty consistent as far as I'm concerned. You know, it made him showing up as Resident Evil 4 a badass earn, you know, because he got hardened by those experiences in the past. Now, the, <clears throat> the depiction of Jill Valentine is probably what will draw the most ire. And that that's totally fair, because she didn't feel like Jill Valentine to me. And, you know, the uh, diversity casting that... I mean, with a very different look. I mean, Jill Valentine has a pretty distinct look, even though she's changed that look a little over time. Now, the look is so distinct, Capcom made her a blonde in Resident Evil 5, so when people noticed her in the trailer, they didn't know it was her. Now, that said, in the movie, she's a supporting character, and that's where we do our token casting. It's I don't like it, I'm not defending it, but that's how things are these days. There are a slew of other changes with characters, and I think a few additions or alterations of lines would have better utilized those changes. Even so, I don't think you need familiar familiarity with the games to understand who the characters are and what they're about, which cannot be said of the Jovovich movies, especially from the third one onward. Now, even if we don't have the context of prior live-action movies, the canonical CG films, like to make these look better in context, I think there are good, mo <coughs> good moments in the movie that stand on their own. Uh, for example, there's this one fight in the dark, uh, muzzle flashes lighting intermittently. Now to me it recreated that uh, feeling in the original games with the fixed angles, you know, you'd be exploring and then camera change, suddenly there's a zombie trying to take a bite out of you. You know, there's also the truck scene. The 
Oh, 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 the track scene. I refuse to believe anything so awesome and so stupid came from anything other than a place of sincerity. I'm thinking of the song right now. From that scene, it's just, ooh, oh, it's, mm, perfect. There was an unusual lack of editing in this uh, one uh, scene with a potential car accident, but the film was otherwise shot competently. Creature effects were neat. You had classic zombies. You also had the town folks newly turning and still had a little bit of lucidity. And I think it was generally unsettling listening to these people. They were too far gone, pleading and appealing to pity so they could beat, so they could eat you. Now, while this particular movie may not be the future of Resident Evil on film, over time I think it might develop a cult following. I mean, the critics, their complaints are correct for, for the most part but I think trying to frame it in the context of wokeism isn't accurate and fellas let's be honest this is nowhere near the worst thing to happen to Resident Evil case in point in the fourth Mila Jovovich movie Wesker is killed in an over the top fight scene okay that's fair fifth movie it's it's literally a filler arc and Wesker is revealed to be alive again which is ludicrous but there is the promise of an awesome final battle and we would like to see Wesker in such a thing sixth movie skips the big battle screws around most of the runtime and Wesker I shit you not, this, the, one of the big villains of the Resident Evil series, Wesker is killed by a fucking door. A door. He is killed by the Persona 3 protagonist.